one. Um, I was actually inspired uh, to do this talk yesterday uh, when I went to Singapore CSS. And I uh, listened to a talk by uh, Mr. Sheldon here, um, where he talked about a specific, um, he talked about a problem he was having at work. So what, what inspired me particularly was that uh, often in, in these talks, we like to, to discuss like a lot of ideal scenarios or new stuff. And sometimes we like forget that there's real life with real problems, which are sometimes not as exciting as the things you want to talk about. Um, but I was inspired to talk about a particular problem that I had uh, and the solution that uh, we, we came to. So I'm not saying that so, so, so there's a problem, right? So I'm not saying that uh, this is how you should do things if you have uh, a choice, but, uh, but this, is, this, is what I, this is what we were doing in the context of the problem. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem is we, are, we were developing a uh, React application and uh, it was built, uh, it, was, it was started using Create React App. Right, so, so that's all fine. The problem is that it had to be served as part of another website. So this is still setting the, the scene here. It was decided that there would be an iframe placed in that website, and we would serve the uh, React application within that iframe. So this was like kind of OK uh, until a particular point where it became not OK. And this point was when we had a modal in the React application, and uh, I'll demonstrate later why things became uh, not OK. Uh, actually, let me, let me demonstrate it now. So I haven't prepared that well for this, but this is the page with the iframe. So the iframe is here. And within this iframe, we're serving a React application, which has a modal. So when you open the modal, there's a problem. Uh, everything is trapped within the iframe. All right, so this is obviously not how a modal is supposed to work. It's actually supposed to cover the entire screen. So what we did basically for this was we made use of a React feature called portals. Uh, it's actually part of React DOM. So what is a portal? Um, what, what React is is basically a tree, right? Uh, for some of us, it's like the tree of life. Um, but <laughs> it's basically a tree. And uh, what, what this tree is is, is uh, your, your components, right? So you usually start off with like app, and then there's like, I don't know, header, whatever, the rest of it. Um, but the thing is, React is actually not a tree. Uh, so I sound like I've just contradicted myself. But React is actually two trees. So the first tree is the one I just described, which is the tree of UI elements. But there's actually a more like, I don't know, phantom-like tree, which is the tree of data. So as, you, as everyone knows in React, uh, data, is, uh, data flow is unidirectional, so top-down uh, and, and unidirectional. So when you have a, um, when you have a React application, uh, in addition to just the UI components forming a tree, the, the relationship of the data between these components also forms like a, another tree on top of it. And for the most part, this is fine, because when you have uh, a component that's a, uh, that's a child of another component, um, then you typically want that component to be able to get access to the data that is either created by its parent or passed on. Um, but sometimes this is not what we want. Sometimes we want to separate these trees. And what portals let us do is, is uh, keep the data tree, but move the UI tree. So this is basically what, how we solve this issue. Um, now, I'm not going to do any live coding, but I'm going to do live uh, git. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
and uh, I didn't have time to figure out how to do this properly, but uh, um, I have to build it because otherwise I get some like cross origin problem in, in the iframe. So this is what we did. And uh, now when we open the modal, I still the same. Now when we open, oh. <laughs> Let's see. Huh. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So what we were able to do was to render the content of the modal outside the iframe. Uh, so what that looks like is uh, here. Okay, this is like just, it, it's almost like pseudocode. Um, but basically what we're doing is inside the modal component, uh, we target outside the, we, we, we target outside the iframe and we mount it there. So if you look, uh, this, this modal in the like data tree is, uh, a sibling of the button, but if you look at the uh, the UI tree, it's actually a sibling of the iframe. Uh, but the but the data flow is still like as it appears in the code, right? So if you if you close, everything still hooks up together. Um, there's a problem though, right? <laughs> Obviously, uh, it doesn't look look like a modal. It's missing all the styles, and that's because the styles are like still trapped in the iframe. So, so how did we solve this? Uh, I, I'd like to say that like, we came up with like, this really great solution, but actually we just happened to find the solution already there. Uh, so we were using style components in uh, the React application. And this is how I found out about this feature. Um, there's actually a uh, feature of styled components which lets you solve this. Um, so let's see if it works this time. Yeah. Okay, so, so it, it works now, right? And what is the feature of style components? It's actually uh, this thing called style sheet manager, which lets you uh, pass a target where you want the uh, generated styles to be attached. So all the styles inside here, where all the styles inside style sheet manager um, will be attached here uh, instead of inside the iframe. Uh, so if you look, they are like here. So that's how we managed to like take out the, the UI and also the styles. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. So if you remove the iframe now, so how how the behavior will be? Because you are attaching to the uh, window top. Yeah. So it's it's dependent on the uh, outside structure. So if if you uh, pass a, uh, a pass a reference to a node that doesn't exist to the target, then you'll you'll have some problems. So uh, the the way we did it was we uh, had like like we, we did it via configuration um, where we had like a, a finite set of uh, environments so we had like the one with the iframe and then for local development uh, we had it without so in one configuration you pass like a default uh, reference there uh, and then for a different one you you choose the the correct element <coughs> yeah any other questions? You, you 
were able to do that without meddling with the outside side? Uh, so, uh, yes, but partly by chance, because uh, when style components generates the class names, it's 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 like a hash. So I don't know what the so technically it's possible that you can break stuff if you happen to have a uh, if you happen to have a class on a component in the outside app which has the same uh, name as as the generated one. Uh, but we didn't face that. So yeah. But yeah, technically it's it is sharing the same scope once it's out. Okay.